Okay, so this recording will be from Engineering Design class. This is a review from the last session, uh, or last class we did, on that CSWP practice problem, a little quiz we took. Um, what these are going to do, or what this video is going to show you, is how you should approach that problem. So, use the headphones, put them on, rewind, pause, fast forward as you need to, but I'm going to walk through all five problems. Hopefully you'll get this correct. You'll see that you need to click on the assessment link. Enter your new scores in there. I will grade those on Friday. So here we go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and start into a new metric part. So I'm going to file new, go up to metric, and hit OK. Now how do I know it's metric? Because it says right there, unit system MMGS. Okay, so we got to make sure we're in the right units. Now the first thing I need to do is go over here to the left into my equations. And again, if we want to just pull yours back up and redo, you can. I'm going to right click and start this from the beginning. So I'm going to go to my manage equations and I'm going to go ahead under global variables, start typing in all five, in this case it's six, six variables that I have to add in here. Now I like to have my caps locked on for this, but I got to do shift, my quotation marks, letter A, quotation marks, enter. Okay, for A for the first one will be 213. Enter again. Go to the next line, shift, quotation B, enter. B in this case is 200, enter again. Shift quotations, quotations, enter. Oh, whoa, sorry. Quotation C quotation, uh, and enter. And that C is going to be 170. Go to the next one, put it in there, and I got a quotate, oops, quotation D quotation. Tab. A, B, C, D, and then I'm going to put in the number for D, 130, enter. Quotation, E, quotation, enter. 41, enter. Now, F is not one we have to enter in. That is actually one we have to reference when we do our whole wizard work. So I'm going to continue beyond that to letter X. So in this case, I'm going to go in here with a quotation, X, quotation, enter and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and use a global variable. I've already set this up so I'm going to say a divided by 3. Enter. And the last one here is y. Enter. This one is another equation. We've got to be paying attention because this will change later. I'm going to go to uh, global variables. b divided by 3 plus 10. And with an enter, all of my variables are in. So at this point, I'm going to say OK and begin excuse me, sketching. Now, I'm going to start this on the top plane. OK, so I'm going to go over here to top plane, start with my sketch toolbar. And I'm going to draw this, the space bar, oops, normal too, sorry. I'm going to draw this with a center rectangle. I'm going to left click, attach to the origin, pull, hit escape to deactivate my tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and start at this point to dimension this part. Okay, now I'm going to look at this, turn that off, go to here. I want to look at it so I can get the numbers in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into an isometric view, even though it is a sketch, so I can see that I'm putting the numbers in the correct area. Now this first one here, I'm going to hit this edge, and this one here is going to be the letter B. So again, to activate your global variables, you have to hit that magic equals button. When you do that, you can drop this down to global variables and, oops, excuse me, and pick B. Check mark. With your tools still activate or active, I'm going to go up here to this upper line here, left click, and I'm going to hit the equals global variable A and hit my check mark. So now I'm fully defined. At this point, all I'm going to do is go ahead and do my features, extrude boss base, and I'm going to start this off with the, the, the bottom end of this. I'm going to go a height of 25 millimeters and hit my check mark. Now, I'm not going to add my fillets until the very end. I'm trying to minimize my steps and possible mistakes, so I'll do all my fillets right towards the end. But I will actually, at this point, add my material. And according to this drawing, the material today will be alloy steel. So I'm going to right-click, Edit Material, <laughs> under my steels, find the alloy steel, not the alloy steel SS, but the alloy steel left click and hit apply and close now i'm going to go ahead at this point do a control save 
And I'm going to go ahead and make this a part that I'll save. Okay, and this would be good to make sure you have this as a backup. Something you go back and refer to. And I'm just going to call this, um, whatever I name this, what do I call it? CSWA Advanced Part 1. Okay, save. Now I'm going to save each iteration separately. Now from here, all I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this top surface, start a new sketch. I'm going to do a space bar normal to, and in this lower right corner right here, I am going to go ahead with my sketch toolbar, and this time I'm going to draw a corner rectangle. So I'm going to left click and draw a corner rectangle. The dimension of this rectangle is a length of 60 on both sides. Now I'm going to save myself time in case I have to change this. I'm going to use my relationship tool, my control key, to click these two lines and make them equal. That way if they make me change something, all I have to do is change one number. It makes it easy on myself. <clears throat> I'm also going to go ahead and add a sketch fillet here. And I'm going to make that sketch fillet 15 millimeters because this rounded corner is going to be critical when I do an offset later. Now you could also do it as a feature fillet, but I'm going to save that step. So I'm going to go up here to this corner, left click, hit my check mark, and now what I'm going to do is go to my feet, and actually in this case I'll check out of this. I'm going to do a space bar isometric so you can see this. I am now going to go to Features, Extrude, and I'm going to extrude this up 10 more millimeters for a total height of 35. 10. Hit my check mark. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that, that letter F now, and I'm going to put that hole wizard in right in this surface. Get that out of the way. So here I go. I'm going to hit this top surface, and actually it doesn't really matter. You can do it later too. But I'm going to try my hole wizard. Okay, now this is where you got to really pay attention because they are very, very explicit in what they want here. So the hole wizard standard is an ANSI metric counter bore. I'm going to go ahead and reset my custom sizing. Counter bore, ANSI metric. Hex bolt type, it says ANSI 18.2.3.5M, which is already there. Okay, and then at this point, the whole size here doesn't matter. It does tell you, though, that the fit, the fit must be close. And they get very, very, very specific on this. So be very careful. Look at each thing. I am going to do the custom sizing because they give me the custom sizing as 15 in the first box, 30 in the second box, 10 millimeters in the third box with a through all con in condition. Okay, so everything else should be unchecked. Now go to your positions tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here, left click. Now it's still active, so I'll hit escape. I'm going to do a space bar on a normal two so I can see this. And now at this point, what I want to get to is I want to dimension this to 30 by 30. So I'm going to turn on my smart dimension tool, go here. Pull out to my right, 30. From here to, to the right side, pull down and type in 30. And now you'll notice that the asterisk in the middle should be black. Hit your check mark, indicate that you are done. Hit your check mark again. And now from your isometric view, here's what you're looking at. Okay, so now from here, what I want to get to is I want to start adding in that little kind of wing shape that's going to go under the two circles. So I'm going to do, again, a sketch on this top surface. Start a new sketch, space bar, normal to. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing some lines. So I'm going to make a rough form of this. So I'm going to pull out, left click, pull away, touch, not quite so much, a little shallow arc over to here, left click, and touch. And I'm going to leave it right there. Hit escape. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and dimension this side here. That length is 80. Now, again, because I know both sides are 80, I'm going to use my relationship tool, my control key, to make these two sides equal to each other. Again, that way if I have to change one, it changes both. Remember, we're working on efficiency here. Now, the center of this is going to be from here to the side. It's going to be equals, and this is going to be the letter... C for a total distance of 170. Okay, and then, then up here it's the same thing. From this side here to the bottom, excuse me, it is going to be the same thing, which is going to be equals global variable C. Okay, and that's right there in those views 
uh, specifically at the side, you can see it. Okay, I hit my check mark, and now you notice the arc gets fully defined by itself. The next step I'm going to do is to use my offset entities. I'm not going to draw this again. There's no reason to. So I'm going to go here and say 15 millimeters. Okay, you can add the dimensions if you like. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Select the chain. Now, in this case, I need it to go to the inside. So I need to also re oops, reverse that direction. Hit your check mark. Okay, I'll take the 15 and pull it out here so you can see it. Now, we're not ready yet. We have to close these ends. So I'm going to turn on my line tool and quickly close this end here and this end up here. Okay, isometric view. Oops, let me get out of this tool. Spacebar, isometric. Now, I need to raise this so that this is sitting exactly 95 millimeters from the bottom. Okay, so if you look carefully, and then this is where I think a couple of you may have made some mistakes. Your weights were really high when I looked at your first one because you may have added too much here. Remember, this thickness here already on the side is 25. So if I want this to be a total height of 95, I need to extrude this an additional 70 millimeters. So again, that'd be 95 minus my additional 25 that I already have there for a total of 70. Now, hit your check mark. Okay, now with that piece done, we can continue working on trying to work on the two circles on the side. But if you look at the drawing carefully, and this is where you got to be really careful at looking at the views, these circles that we're going to create are actually 10 millimeters off of the, each one of these two surfaces. So this is where I'm going to start adding in a couple extra planes. So I'm going to go under my features toolbar, turn on my reference geometry in a plane, and I'm going to highlight this, oops, this surface over here. Now, the nice thing is it defaults to 10, and the 10 is outside here. That's perfect. I'm going to leave that alone and hit my check mark. I'm going to repeat this one more time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now to reference geometry and plane. Oops, this time I want to go over to this side. Oh, never mind. Get rid of that. Sorry, delete. And delete, and I want to pick that plane instead. That should be also 10 millimeters outside the part. I hit my check mark. Now, I'm going to come back to plane 1. Turn on my sketch toolbar and start a new sketch, spacebar normal 2. Now I'm going to turn on my circle tool and I'm going to attach it right here to that midpoint and pull a circle. I'm going to turn my smart dimension and smart dimension this circle here. Now that smart dimension is dimension X, I believe. Yes, this should be X. I've got to double check this. Um, that should be X, yes. So I'm going to go here and hit my equal sign. Okay, I'm going to go to my global variables, and this one should be X, 71, and check. Okay, so now at this point, I've got that defined. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll rotate this so you can see it. But I'm going to go ahead and extrude this back a distance of, what are these distances? A distance of D. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my features toolbar. I'm going to go to extrude by space. Flip my direction, and in this dimension box here, I'm going to say equals global variable D. Check mark. Done. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn this plane one. I'm going to left click and hit the eyeball to hide it. I'm going to repeat that procedure on this side also. Now you'll notice I didn't put that hole in there yet. I'm going to do that later. Okay, I don't want to have to go through and cut twice. So I'm going to go ahead to this side now and start another sketch. Spacebar normal two. Go to my circle tool, attach it to that midpoint and pull, and I'm going to dimension this one to Y. So I'm going to go here equals global variable letter Y. Check mark. Okay. So now again, if I go to my isometric view here, so you can see this, I'm going to extrude this circle, reverse at a distance of equals global variable D and check mark. I'm going to go to plane two now, left click and hit the eyeball. Okay, so now I've got a good portion of this done. All right, so at this point here, I'm going to go ahead and start working on, well, and it, it just depends on what you want to do. I, I think in this case, I'll go ahead and finish these holes and we'll finish this surface here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this face right here. So we're going to do two extrude cuts on each face. Can't do them at the same time. I'm going to go here to sketch, space bar, normal to, 
turn on my circle tool, hover on this edge so I can see center, left click and pull. Okay, now these two circles are the same size. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna hit my equals for global variable and this will be letter E, 41. Check. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is go to features, extruded cut, and now I'm gonna do a through all, check mark. Okay, repeat that to the other side here. So I'm gonna highlight this circle, space bar normal to, start a new sketch, circle tool, hover, connect and pull, smart dimension, click the circle, hit equals, global, global variable E, and hit your check mark. Again, I'll go from here, features, extruded cut, and we'll make that A through all. Check mark. So now from this standpoint, I'm going to go ahead, finish off these circles by adding the fillets. Okay, and you got to be careful because this is where they like to play little games with you. Okay, well, we're going to get the fillets right on this one, but they will change these. They usually change the fillet, or excuse me, not fillet, a chamfer. Okay, they'll either change the chamfer or they may change the size of fillets. You always got to pay attention to the details. Now, chamfer for this one is going to be 2 by 45 degrees. So I'm going to go up to my feature toolbar, drop down the fillet tool here to chamfer, set up the numbers to 2, 45, I'm going to pick the edge of each of these circles. I want to do full preview so I can see this. So I go here, back edge here, back edge here, and check. So at that point, all my circles are done. Now I'm going to highlight this surface right here. I'm going to turn on my sketch tool bar and start a new sketch. Space bar, normal to. Now I'm going to go here under my sketch toolbar and use a really cool tool, we should know this well, called offset. Now I'm going to set that offset to 9 millimeters inside, so I'm going to reverse my direction. I'm going to hit my check mark. Now I've already got a fully defined sketch, that's all I need right there, so now what I want to do is I want to do an extruded cut. Now this is where some of you were doing some things a little differently, we're trying to extrude up from the bottom. What I'm going to do is go to features. Extrude a cut, and I'm going to do what's called offset from surface. Now, the surface I want to offset it from is the bottom, and I want the offset distance from here to the bottom to be five millimeters. So, essentially, what I'm telling the computer is I want you to cut this down until you're five millimeters from this bottom face, and then stop. I hit my check mark, and that is now done. The last step I need to do is put my 10 millimeter fillets in, and this part will be finished. So I'm going to go to Features, go up to Fillet. From Fillet, I'm going to go in here at 10 millimeters, which is default, and I'm going to hit all of these corners. Okay, so there's all these ones inside. I believe a total of six. Be patient as you do this so you don't miss any. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, nope, nope. Hit that edge there. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on these four corners. So I'm going to do all 10 of these at one time. It saves me a step. Hit my check mark. Space bar isometric. File save. Okay, so at this point, it looks like I have a finished part. All right, to verify, I'll look at my evaluate and mass properties. And you can see the first one, I get 14207.35. Now, knowing that, I can build from here, okay? And I'm not going to show you the rest of the masses from here on out. I want to give you the first one, all right? That is 100% correct. Now, you can build from there. If you didn't get that mass, you need to go back and repeat the steps to make sure. Because if you followed mine, and this is the third or fourth time I've drawn this, I've gotten the same answer every single time. Okay, so that's part one. So now what I'm going to do is go into my equations, right-click and manage. And now we're going to go through part two, which is going to go ahead and change the parameters. Okay, so this one's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go in here. For A, it goes from 213 oops, to 225. Okay, and it's going to, I have it so it automatically rebuilds as I do this. You don't have to do that. You can always hit rebuild at the end. But you can see mine shifting in the background as I put these new numbers in. 210 here. Okay, 170 is going to change to 176. 130 is changing to 137. 41 is changing to 39. 
my a divided by 3 stays the same, and my b divided by 3 plus 10 stays the same. Hit OK. I'm going to go and double check by hitting Rebuild. I'm going to do a File Save As. Do not save over your first part just in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to do a Save As, CSW Advanced Part 2. Save them individually. This is good practice. So if something goes wrong, you know your first part is safe. I'm going to say OK. That takes care of that. So now look at your mass. Okay, and if you've done everything correct, your mass should be OK. So that's part two. Now I'm going to go back and do part three. Okay, so whatever you got for that mass properties, make sure you input it into the new box. And again, if your first one's correct and you made all those changes I just made and did a rebuild, your mass should be 100% correct. Now, part three. I'm going to go back to my equations and right click manage equations. Okay, again, this is all you have to do is just change it real quick. Now, I've been doing this for a total of 21 minutes, and I'm almost through three problems. Okay, so 209, hit enter. It's going to rebuild as it goes because I have it set that way. This 210 goes to 218. The 176 is going to go to 169. Enter. D is going to go to 125. E is going to go back to 41. F still stays the same whole wizard. Okay, I should have checked that last time. It's the same uh, counterbore. X is A over 3. Yep. Y is B3. B over 3 plus 10, still the same. At this point, I say OK. And just for safety, I usually do rebuild. And again, check your mass properties. Okay. It should be based upon your first one. If you're just changing these variables and nothing else, it should be exactly right again. Now, don't forget, file, save as, and this one's going to be part three. Take your math property answer and type that into the blank box. Okay, so now we've been going for 22 and a half minutes at this point, and I've got my first three problems completed. So we have got two more to go, and this is kind of how the test plays out. Once you've got these quick changes done in the first initial part, they're going to make you make a major modification in the next part. So now we're on to part four, stage two. Okay, so now we got to make some solid or some modifications. Now, one of the first things I'm noticing in the modifications is that this piece right here with the counterbore has to go away. Well, one of the things you can do instead of deleting it, I'm just going to suppress it. What that means. Because I'm going to go up here, back to boss extrude number two, because it's the second thing I did. If you left click on it, oops, over here, right here, you can see there's a suppress button. If you suppress it, it's going to suppress it and the counter bore at the same time. It's going to give me a warning. Okay, okay. Now, what's happened here, it's warning me because of this fillet. Remember this fillet at the end? Okay, if I go back and edit it, that fillet no longer exists. This edge disappeared. And that's what it's telling me up here is that, hey, you lost two edges. So all I'm going to do is highlight those two green ones, hit delete, and delete again, hit my check mark, and now the error went away. Okay, so that was a really easy fix right there. So that corner is good. However, there still is a fillet in that corner. So I'm going to can go back to here, and I'm going to go ahead back to this and add that fillet in. Hit my check mark. Spacebar isometric. So this piece right here is still good. I'm looking at the cutaways. The cutaways still show me five millimeters, which is the offset. We're good there. So this part is done. Okay. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side of this pocket and I'm going to create a pocket on this side. So I'm going to go over here. Spacebar normal two. Sketch and start a new sketch. Now, again, this one has a 9 millimeter offset. So what I'm going to do is, with this surface like it is, I'm going to go offset entities, 9 millimeters and reverse. I'm going to hit my check mark. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not correct. Okay. What I need to do is I need to get rid of some lines. So I'm going to highlight and delete that line, highlight and delete this line, get rid of some of this stuff over here like so. I don't want to get rid of that entire line, so sorry. I'm going to delete that. This curve right here has to go away. Okay, I'm going to do this on the other side 
why I'm at it. I'm going to go over here, get rid of that line, delete, get rid of this curve, delete. And now what I'm looking at is basically, get back to normal two, a curve that has nowhere to go. Now this has got a straight line. If you look closely, there is a straight line coming off this that is tangent to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these two curves back temporarily. I'm going to grab a line tool and from this edge straight up vertical, left click, hit escape. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to add a quick relationship. The relationship will be between that new line and this curve. I'm going to make them tangent. Now it's nice and smooth. I can also at this point, if I need to, go in here and trim that off. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Draw a line from here over. Escape. Control key. Horizontal line and curve. Make tangent. Turn on your trim tool. Get rid of this excess line. Okay. We're not quite there though. If you look in this corner, this does not look quite right. This should be a sharp corner that we are eventually going to add a fillet to. So I'm going to go to here. Delete that off. Pull that up. Left click and pull this over. Okay, so now I've got my figure the way I want it to be. Okay, now actually if you wanted to save a step, you could have done this, and, I, and, and honestly I could have done this way back at the cut extrude I did when I did um, this offset here. And that's on you if you wanted to do it that way. Okay, so if you wanted to save one more step in your design tree, I would have gone back to here to this original sketch and actually, I think I'm going to stop and do that. So I'm going to exit out for just a second here and discard my changes. I'm going to actually go back. So this is a better way of approaching this. I'm going to open the sketch back up because this is already good. Okay, so I'm going to go back and do the same thing I just did before. So again, I'll just use my offset tool, 9 millimeters, reverse in, and check. Get rid of the lines I don't need. And see, now this makes it easier because I don't have any of those fillets I have to deal with. Okay, I'll go here. Oops, not there. Here. Okay, now I'll pull these curves back just a little bit like we did before. Take my line tool, connect from here to a vertical line, make sure it's vertical. Control key, hit your curve and your vertical line and make them tangent. Okay, I'll do the other side while I'm at it. Go here and horizontal. Control key, horizontal and curve and make tangent. Turn on your trim tool and trim off this excess line okay so now if i go back and i exit out of this it's not quite correct or actually it did do it okay so it did pick it up okay notice this cut is exactly the same so it automatically picked that up so i saved the step and i've got both pockets now i can come back to this fillet here and i can still add in those 10 millimeter fillets that are in these corners so i instead of having multiple fillet tools I can do it still in one fillet. Okay, so I'm getting these three in here. And I'm going to hit my check mark. Spacebar isometric. So now I've got pockets on both sides. Okay, so the first major iteration is done. Okay, that's good. Now, the next one is kind of the one that a lot of students mess up because what we do is we'll go in here. You'll get, your, you'll get your cut going, but you cut a full circle and end up leaving a big old missing gap underneath. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to attack this problem. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually go to this face right here, go to my feature toolbar, and go to reference geometry. I'm going to put in a new plane in. And that plane is going to be 30 millimeters in, flip its direction so it's going into the part. So I'm going to create a new plane that's 30 millimeters inside this circle. I hit my check mark. Now I'm going to start a sketch on that plane, space bar normal two. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and use an offset in these tool. And I'm going to offset this outside edge. I'm going to offset this inside edge. Oops, wait, sorry, I lost my sketch. Oop, turn my sketch back on, sorry. Uh, not offset. I'm going to go and highlight oops, that line there, hit convert entities, hit the inside edge, convert entities. Okay, so now if you look, I have two circles kind of sitting in there, like so, at 30 millimeters in. Now, this is where a lot of students will extrude, cut 30 millimeters, and end up taking this chunk below. Okay, but that's not what the problem is showing. 
So what I need to do is I need to work off of this piece right here. So I'm going to take my line tool, connect off of here and go straight up, escape, go to my line tool, connect to this corner and go straight up, and hit escape. Turn on your trim tool. I'm going to trim out that piece there and this piece here. Hit my check mark. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide this plane for a second because I want you to see what's going on. Now if you look carefully, now it looks kind of like a C shape there. This will not get touched. So as I cut back, this is left alone, but only this outside edge of the circle is being cut. So now I can go to Features, Extrude a Cut, go 30 millimeters, I believe is the cut. I'm looking here, it is 30 millimeters. Okay, make sure it's going back, not forward, and hit your check mark. And now your cut, whoa, except for I messed that one up. I shouldn't take the whole piece out. It was supposed to be offset 10. Man, I gotta pay attention, sorry about that, okay? That was incorrect. I forgot, it was offset 10 millimeters from this surface. I was not paying attention, 10 millimeters. Okay, check. So this inside line, sorry guys, should be deleted. Okay, so this should be trimmed off here, here, here. Oops, control Z. It should be trimmed off in these pieces. Wow, not good on my part, sorry. Okay, so it's actually a 10 millimeter. If I hit my check mark here and go back out, now it looks correct. Okay, even teachers made some mistakes too. But the big issue is, notice I did not lose this chunk. And I know some of you are off because you cut that piece out. Okay, so if I do my isometric view, I've made all the changes except for one. And this is the big one, okay? I did not change the chamfer. Okay, the chamfer went from a 2 by 45 to a 2 by 30. Okay, and this is exactly what I'm talking about because they'll, they'll play this game with you. Instead of 45, we're going to change this to 30. Hit enter. Hit your check mark. And now those have all changed. Okay, I'm just trying to think of any other things I'm looking on here that may have changed. And I believe that is it. Okay, so at this point, I want to do a file save as. I'm going to save this as part number four. Save. And this one, again, is a multiple choice problem. So I will let you see this one. My mass properties come to 12154.08. I'm not sure if that was one of the choices or not. Uh, let me look. Stage two. It is not. So that means I am off somewhere. Okay. So in this case, I got to go back and kind of look at what I have changed here and see what my mistakes were. Okay. So in this case, I got to double check. If I did the problems correctly, oh, I don't know if I did my equations right. I'm looking at my own correction. I did not. I was looking at, I did not change. That was the part I didn't change. They also wanted me to change my variables here, and I forgot to do that. So let's go back and fix this. This should be 221. So this is for problem four. I was looking at problem three, forgot to change. 211. This right here is 165. This is 121. And this is 37. Now, be careful because there's the other part. Okay, the A divided by 3 stays the same, but this becomes B divided by 3 plus 15. Okay, this is the little things they try to throw you off on. Now, if I hit OK, now it should have changed. If I go back up, I'm going to do a quick save. Mass properties, I get a 13206.40, which is exactly the correct answer. So I know I am 100% on the right path. Okay, so base I've given you the first and the fourth problem, so you should at least get 25 points on this. But now what I gotta do is go to the last stage of this, which is the stage two, part five. And I'm not seeing, do, 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 do. I'm not sure what my pages are. Hold on. I am trying to get myself organized. Three, stage two. And I'm missing one of them. So let me look this up. So at this point, all it is is a, a quick modification. Let me open up my piece here and uh, find that fifth one. 
and uh, get that taken care of here real quick. All right, give me just a second here. I'm going to fix this real quickly and open this up. So problem number five, the last part of this. Okay, so there's four. I know I got that right. So five is just simply going back into my equations, manage equations, and now I change my numbers one more time. So 229, enter. Two, oh, ah, go back, sorry. That should be 211 to 217. 165 goes to 163, 121 goes to 119, 37 goes to 34, A divided by 3 stays the same, B divided by 3 plus 15, and say OK. And at that point, I will do a quick file save as and save this as part 5. At that point, I'm not going to show you this, but if you've done everything right to that point, this should be an automatic 100%. Check your mass properties, whatever that mass is, type it into the box. At this point, you can hit submit, and you should have a perfect score. Okay, so we've been now working on this for just over 35 minutes. We got all five problems done, and that was our target. Okay, we were trying to shoot for 45 minutes or less, and that was what we just did. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, again, watch this video as many times as you need to. Uh, you can rewind it, take your time, pause it, fast forward through what you know. But that is what is the correct solution for this. Next class, we'll continue on another one very similar to this. Good luck. Make sure you submit your scores before you leave class. I will see you all on Monday. Take care.